Welcome to this tutorial on MySQLi and the reason that I'm doing this tutorial is because MySQL Connect and MySQL Functions have all been um, deprecated which means that they'll be no longer supported in future versions of PHP. Now while that might not be an issue now, eventually in the future web hosts will upgrade to newer versions of PHP and will no longer support the older ones which means if you have an older script that only uses MySQL Connect and Functions, then they're going to cease to work. Now, I will note that this isn't going to uh, happen anytime soon. I think that's a fair point because, let me put it this way, the new version of PHP, when web hosts upgrade, will not support. So those websites will not work. Any website that uses the old MySQL will not work. Um, and obviously, I don't think this is, is going to be good for their personal business because they have a lot of clients which aren't web developers that have, you know, bought scripts in the past uh, which have old code. And obviously, when this takes effect, they're not going to work. So it's probably to their personal advantage, it's probably advantageous to them to continue to support older versions of PHP, which is something a lot of web, web hosts do already for older versions of PHP. However, eventually, it's fair to say that web hosts will not support the older version of MySQL. So I think the point is that it's a good idea to make the switch now ahead of time while you have the time. And there's no point developing websites that aren't going to work in de you know indefinitely in the future. So. What I've done in preparation of this tutorial is I've gone into phpMyAdmin, my testing server. I've created a database called MySQLi Tuts. Within the database, I've created a table called Users, and within that table, I've got two fields. Um, and I, what I'm going to show you how to do is connect to a database using MySQLi. I'm going to show you um, how we can pull information from the database with MySQLi. So it's going to be a good introduction for you and uh, hopefully it'll be useful. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is we just need to open up uh, our PHP tags and we need to first basically define the MySQLi variables we need to connect. So the first one of course will be DB host. And uh, depending on you know your testing server, how you set it up, it's probably localhost. Um, but especially when you actually, if you if you use this for a larger script, you're going to have to change this obviously to contain your uh, remote server's information. The second variable will be db user, and in this instance for me, that's root. And um, the third variable we need is going to be db pass, which is basically password, of course. And I don't have a password as this is my testing server. So of course, um, I don't have any security issues because it's just a testing server. Now, the, uh, the fourth and fifth variable we need to create is going to be db uh, error one and db error two. Um, and basically, the first error is basically going to be could not connect to your database. And the second error is going to be could not find your table. Okay, once we've actually uh, defined those variables, we need to connect to our database. So I'm going to create another variable. I'm just going to call this con. It stands for obviously connection, and that's going to equal uh, mysqli underscore connect. And then, of course, we're going to list the uh, variables. So we have db host. DB user, and we have uh, DB pass. And of course, if this fails, so or die, we're going to give the 
uh, basically error one. So now that we've actually connected, I'm just gonna actually test and see if it's been successful. So I'm just gonna say if um, the variable con uh, equals true, we're just gonna echo a message saying it works. So if we don't see that, we know it doesn't work. So let's just uh, preview this in Explorer. Okay, so we're getting the message, it works. So we know that it's connecting to the database successfully. So at this point, what we now need to do is, um, just to explain, we've connected to the server, but we've not actually selected a database and we've not selected the table that we want to actually work with. So Let's go ahead and just select the database. So I'm going to create a new variable and I'm just going to call it um, select underscore db. And it's going to equal uh, my SQLI select db. And I'm just going to call the variable con with, well, connect. And then this is where we actually define the database that we want to uh, select. So let's. So if I pull up uh, Petri my admin again, you can see here that the database is called MySQLI underscore tuts. So in here, it's going to enter MySQLI underscore tut, or is it tuts? It's tuts. Um, so this is going to be case sensitive as well, which is a very important point. And of course, if this fails, we're just going to say or die, and then we're going to give the uh, db error two this time. So that's it. We've now selected the um, the database that we want to work with. Uh, what we now need to do is create, uh, sorry, select the actual table that we want to work with. So I'm going to create a new variable. I'm going to call this one query. And this is going to equal my SQLI query. And again, we're going to select the connection variable we uh, created earlier. And here we're going to say, basically, this is going to be our SQL. So we're just going to say select all from, and this is where we'll say the table. I believe it's users. I believe it's users, as you can see. So this is the table. And yes, so here we'll just say users. So select all from users. And that's it. That's our query. Oh, sorry. This is actually should be actually quotation marks. Um, but that's. That's it. So we're about ready to actually start uh, really handling um, the, the, the query. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find out the number of rows that uh, are actually in the, the table. So find out if the actual table is empty or not. So I'm going to create another variable. I'm just going to call it num uh, rows. And that's going to equal my s sqli underscore num underscore rows. Let's pull in our uh, query uh, variable that we've just created. So now that we have the number of rows, we can actually just start writing an if statement. So it's pretty simple from here on in. So I'm just going to say if. Um, are, so basically what we want to know if the uh, table actually contains any fields. So we're just going to say if, and then the variable of uh, num rows, which we've just established, is not equal to uh, zero, then we want to basically carry out um, this code between these curly braces. Uh, so at this point, all we have to do is, I'm actually going to say while, 
because what I want to do here is I want to um, if it's not empty I want to pull in information from the uh, database I want to pull in information so I'm gonna say uh, fetch equals my SQLI fetch and uh, put in the query variable um, and here we're going to open up our, our uh, curly braces and here uh, I'm just going to say echo and we're going to echo fetch um, and here I'm going to have to actually uh, return to the uh, database just for a second um, because what we want to pull in is basically the username field so I want to display the, the members names so here we have Ashley and Lisa is what I want to load on the page so with its username and again it is case sensitive so user name so let's um, test the code let's return to Explorer and there you go so if I put these two side by side you can see from the uh, from the database table in phpMyAdmin in my testing server itself these are the two uh, fields here so you can see the first record is actually the second record is Lisa and it's loading that out on a page perfectly now it might not look like much at this point but it, it does work so that's basically a, a sort of a brief introduction but that's how you connect to a database using uh, MySQLi and that's how you can pull in information uh, with MySQLi so it is a much more secure um, version of MySQL um, there are some shortcuts but to be honest with you there's not a huge amount of differences uh, within it so it's, if you know MySQL uh, fairly well in, in all honesty it, it shouldn't be too difficult to get used to handling to get used to handling um, with MySQL I. So thank you for following along with this video tutorial, but I'd just like to take this opportunity to encourage you to visit our official website, simpletut.com. Here we uh, release all of our new tutorials uh, and it's an easy way to find the content from us that you're looking for. Uh, we have uh, various various tutorials from building user registration systems to file upload scripts, availability calendars, how to get more likes on Facebook, PHP classes, how to develop an advanced website layout with CSS and uh, div tags, um, how to create CSS menus. Uh, but of course, if you are stuck at any point on this or any other of our tutorials, we have a ask a question area, which is completely free. And you can use this section of our site to ask questions and contact a member of our team who'd be more than happy to assist you. We also offer a range of freebies ranging from uh, an availability calendar to a file upload script, a content locker, uh, pricing tables, uh, various Photoshop files and, and even a user registration system. We also have a blog where we post uh, a, a lot of interesting uh, articles and also explain some of the code that we uh, write or should I say use in our tutorials. I'd also like to say that we are a free project and it is your support that enables us to keep going providing you new resources, materials and tutorials and of course support. If you are willing to make a donation then please visit our website simpletat.com and click on the donate uh, option on our menu and you'll be re redirected to PayPal where you can specify how much you'd like to donate and of course I'd also like to encourage you to visit our new project which is cssmenucreator.com again there'll be a link in the description uh, and this website is, is one of our latest projects and enables you to create your own custom CSS menus online. All you have to do, and we have, as you can see here, a video showing you exactly how to use the site, but you can select a menu. So for example, if I select build menu here, you can literally build the menu online. You get a preview up here 
and it literally writes the code. And if you sign up to our site, you'll be able to access the CSS. So all you'll have to do is literally build your site, your menu online using our uh, advanced software here and literally then just copy and paste the code unlock the css and copy it into your existing pages um, so it's literally the easiest way you could ever imagine to build your css menus it's a huge time saver for uh, experienced webmasters or people that are new to the css and web development world it's a time saver and a money saver I'd also like to encourage you to visit our official Facebook page, which you can access either by a link in the description of this video if you're watching on YouTube, or you could visit our website simpletut.com and access our Facebook page from there. There are links on the page. And here it, we, I'd like to encourage you to like our Facebook page because this will enable us to stay connected and update you when we release new tutorials, uh, various different resources, and even freebies. If you are looking for a web designer or perhaps a pre-built solution, then why not visit SiteEasy.com. This is where we offer a range of different products and services, including pre-built PHP applications, including user registration, CSS menu generator, uh, search, site search, digital goods for PayPal, comment systems, billing systems, and much more. We also offer pre-built websites, our pre-built websites include e-commerce, social networking, content management, file upload, property listings, and much more. And of course, if you'd like to get in touch with a member of our team for any issue, um, then please do so by visiting our website, clicking on the support option from the menu, and filling out this form. And you'll be able to contact us, and a member of our team will be more than happy to contact you to resolve any queries you may have.